For many, including myself, the mid-1980s Porsche 911 was the very epitome of the high-class sports car. Its performance was outrageous, its looks were pure class, and back in the day, this was my dream drive. Porsche revived the evocative competition named Carrera, but this car fitted its best engine to date and landed their new car right at the top of the world's sports car hierarchy. And so to find out if it's right to finally meet one's dream drive, join me, Roger Bailey, for a step back in time. So yes, let's step back from today's modern sport car offerings for a while and into this Porsche Classic where we'll engage with an old life force, an old life force that is Porsche DNA. This is an insight which might just make us head over to the classic car adverts to imagine swapping out of our modern and convenient performance cars and into something potentially life-changing. A growing number of car lovers are doing this. They're seeking change from modern vehicles and entering a relationship, finding engagement and discovering adventure. And it's the 911 Soul we are discovering here. It comes at you from every pore of this car. You smell it, touch it, you see it in that classic silhouette, and in a second or two, we'll hear it and immerse ourselves in the stuff. At our G-Series 911 unveiling in 1985, this updated Carrera could outperform any car in its class. It gave its owner high status and, of course, outstanding build quality, bulletproof reliability, and was in a league of its own when it came to supercar practicality. It seems our first car's first owner splashed out on a few items from the options list, including the sport package, that's lowered suspension, the outrageous rear wing, and these handsome body-coloured Fuchs alloy wheels. But we really want to know how this hero from the 1980s feels and drives and, well, yes, all right then, let's go. So, first impressions highlight the slightly offset driving position and old car smell. A tiny cabin and when we look around in here, we are obviously in a remarkably small car. Press the organ stop clutch pedal which emerges up from the floor, twist the small key and the engine immediately bursts into life, sounding busy. It's a mix of whirring gears, distance exhaust rumble and a washing cooling pad. Flip the throttle and the whole car responds. You sit very low to the road in these old 911s and it's an intimate feeling. You can't help feeling connected with such a small compact car and so too with the controls, the road, all of which can join with one another on a kind of intimate level. Engage the long levered, slightly tricky gearbox, let out the clutch pedal, Press down the right pedal for power and receive a reassuring forward shove, smoothly delivered by that flat 6 mil which is sitting somewhere behind you. Brakes are less reassuring, the floor hinging pedal needs a knack to stop us sharply without locking up the front wheels. A sharp reminder of the way things were 30 odd years ago and how much stopping technology has progressed since then. Steering is light, responsive and deliciously direct and it's this car's standout feature, it's USP if you like. You feel every detail of the road surface transmitted into your hands. Every pull and tug of the rim, this way and that, is like a two-way conversation with the surface beneath. Pull the wheel round hard and the reward is fast, instantaneous turning. It's a driving experience lost in later, wider shot, heavier 911 models. And where later models made more noise, this is a pre-sports exhaust and pre-artificial manufactured sound sort of car. What we hear is a distant, naturally rorty engine and we can make out the bellowing induction sounds, all of which build in volume with the rising revs. It's a pleasing, sonorous kind of cacophony, mellow, while managing to sound urgent. So, in that day I remember these sports cars being properly fast and I've been waiting to demonstrate just how quick they are. So, 0-60 runs entail no more than lifting the clutch while pressing down hard on the accelerator. Now, these sorts of things are relative, and comparing this performance with, say, I don't know, if we had a 1987 1.6 Capri, well, we would have just blown it out of the water and blitzed this road. However, in the world of today, I'm estimating we just demonstrated how a 1.6 Fiesta accelerates, so my antics here have pretty much missed the point entirely. See, driving this Carrera is about escapism. 
It's about being transported away from the modern, sanitised world of sameness we all live in today. It's an opportunity to appreciate the delightful car from the before time and to sense the poignancy of the continuous disappearance of these old sports cars and car lovers should lament the diminishing opportunities to savour these unique driving experiences. So happily today in this very car we have a moment in time preserved. We have in our hands an example of manufacturing and styling lovely produced several decades ago by some very talented engineers. And you may now be feeling the desire to become a custodian of a historic motoring icon like this. And why wouldn't you? Well, if you are, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you're heading off to those adverts to do your homework, well, do exactly that. Do your homework. So inspect the body. They are all galvanized. However, this does not stop rust happening. 3.2 engines are tough and reliable, uh, but make sure they don't smoke, except for a few seconds on startup. Post-1987 cars, well, they had a much improved gearbox, and many examples will, of course, clocked up more than 150,000 miles, which is not a problem if the car's being cared for properly. And, of course, finally, spend money on a decent inspection of your car. The Porsche 911G model was a true perennial and it was built for a full 17 years. That its replacement, the Porsche 928, failed to supplant the 911, well, this is just a testimony to the 911 concept as a whole. And what we have driven here today is an integral part of the history of cars. I mean, that's all cars. There really aren't that many cars which we can call icons and yet here we are today being allowed to discover and enjoy just such a thing and it's thanks to its owner Mark who's kindly allowed us out in this particularly charming example. In the 1980s this was the sports car of the moment. It could do the job of supercars when it needed to, be a commuter car when required and bestowed its owner a large helping of kudos with its style and its class. That this Porsche has stood the test of time is not just remarkable, it is testimony to the genius of the concept and the integrity of its engineering. Even more remarkable is that for less than the price of a modern day Boxster, you can buy an appreciating classic like this one. That's this inimitable and glorious Type G Porsche 911 Carrera. So, thank you for watching. If you've liked this video, please feel free to click the like button, as in doing so, it will tell YouTube to recommend it to more people. And comments are always welcomed. I read every single one and I'll reply to most. And if you haven't already, please think about subscribing. And if you hit this little notification bell, I'll send you another video.